Radio. Okay, so this video, as you can tell in the title, is how I went from basically failing physics, or ever so slightly to it, to gain into Oxford to go and do physics, like mathematical and all theoretical jazzy stuff. So let me take you guys back. I'm going to tell you a story. Just let me uh, let me set the scene for you real quick. So essentially, timeline, it's five, six years ago. So we're looking beginning of A-levels, it's year 12. Essentially, I am doing math, physics, biology. I did my GCSEs, I didn't do too much work for that. Come my A-levels, I'm just there trying to rely on pure natural talent to get a brother through, but then I find out I'm not pure and naturally talented at uh, you know academics as much as I would have thought I was. So essentially what happens is, I finish off my first year of A-levels, do my ASs, so year 12 for everyone that doesn't know that. And essentially, I got my grades back, I got a D in maths, an E in biology, and I got an F, so I actually failed, a U actually, in physics. I was one mark of getting a passing grade, which was an E as well. And turns out, when we were going back to redo the papers and check through everything, if I did not find another mark, I would have had to retake the year and everything. Granted, it was lucky enough, we actually had another paper where I got a good grade in that, I got an A in everything. But besides that, I didn't know that this paper was even going to exist, so if I didn't get a mark here, I was going to have to retake the year. And that was not happening, because I joked enough about people having to retake the year as well. So, essentially what happened was, I we went through the entire mark scheme, my friends, uh, these were all the smartest kids in the year. They came over and everything, and we found that I should have got one working mark for like a Young's Modulus question. I did all the correct working. Somehow I chucked the numbers in the calculator wrong, got a wrong answer and everything. So the teacher just marked me wrong. Like he's got everything else wrong. This is no different kind of thing. My friends all vouched. Teacher said, nah, it's not happening. I was the smartest kid in the class, and he was like, nah, he deserves a mark. And she was like, are you sure? He was like, yeah. And I got the mark passed, and it was all great. So... Basically, year 13, started doing a lot more work, grade showed and everything, got pretty good A-levels, and then I started off uni, and from then, I started implementing these things to actually get really, really good grades, and these are my, spoke to some of my flatmates and everything, and these we kind of agreed are like the four fundamental things that you need when it comes to wanting to get the best grades possible. So, number one being realistic with how much time you actually have and how long things are going to take. So, number one, essentially, you only have 24 hours in a day. However many that is in a week, I don't know, but you only have a certain amount of time in a day, a week, month, and everything in the term, right? So essentially, looking at it, you sleep for eight hours, so you only have 16, you dabble around, do whatever jazz you have going on, you really only have like 12 hours to really work with in a day. So saying, what are your priorities? So breaking it down to you have your studies, you have your hobbies, and you have your socializing and everything in between. If you tell yourself, this is a really big important part, I'm going to dedicate around six-ish hours of genuine good studying. You can tell yourself how long each thing should take when you need to go and study. For example, let's say, you know, I'm going to start the week, I'm an A-level student, and I want to go and learn how to do differentiation and integration. These are pretty big topics when you're doing a maths A-level. It's not easy to go and do, it's actually probably impossible if you're just a regular bloke to go and do, um, you know, integration differentiation in one day. So telling yourself, okay, I have six hours today. I'm probably only going to get differentiation covered. I'm going to learn what it is. And I'm going to probably just start looking at some trig functions and everything. In my head, I'm going to tell myself, realistically, you know how long everything's going to take? And I think this is going to take four hours, probably. If I'm quick, maybe three, if I really get it. At most, it'll take me five, five and a half, even that six mark. Always overestimate your time when it comes to it, because then you're a little bit happy when it goes, oh, wicked, okay. So um, I've actually got it done a little bit early, have a little bit of extra time to play with. And then you can maybe go and do some more studying, to just cash money at that point, or you could go and do your hobbies, your socializing and everything. So be realistic with how much time you have in a given time frame. So that is tip number one. Tip number two is just stop procrastinating. Get things done when they need to get done. So for example, you're doing a physics degree, you have problem sheets due, or you have a test to revise for, 
let's say you're doing an essay based subject, you have an essay due next Friday. Let's say we have all of our things due next Friday. Don't wait till the Thursday before to start doing it or even don't be my housemate. Uh, he knows exactly who he is, who would leave it till the morning that it's due to then wake up not even early to then try and get an essay done, which was like three, four thousand words. That's just pretty stupid. And I've told him enough times. So let's say, OK, Sunday now, this thing's due Friday, Monday, Tuesday, I'm going to hammer it down. I've managed my time. This is when I want to get everything done and everything right. So Monday, Tuesday, hammer that. And it should realistically be done. You might have a little bit left over and everything. And then you can just start chucking little bits and bobs into the thing come Friday. This is just going to reduce the amount of stress and anxiety that you build up over the week because a lot of people get pretty stressed out and, you know, stress just leads to anxiety. Anxiety leads to you just not really thinking straight and you just start, you know, you're not as efficient when it comes to actually getting everything done, right? So you want to be as efficient as possible when you're doing everything. You don't want to waste time. You don't want to, you know, with the time that you is limited to some extent, you don't want to use that in a wasted way. You want to be as efficient as possible. So try and get things done early. It saves you the stress, saves you the anxiety. That would be tip number two. Right here, my camera actually cut off when I was trying to explain the other tips and everything. So tip number three, essentially understanding that you don't want to progress unless you actually understand the things before. So it's like this idea um, of building a house. If the foundations aren't set, you're not going to start putting the pillars up. You're not going to start chucking the scaffolding, this, that, the other. Everything's just going to come collapsing down on top of itself. So setting a really good base is probably the most important thing when it comes to moving on to the other things. It's just going to make it easy, one, a lot easier. And two, it's actually just becomes feasible because it's actually just not you're not going to go and understand quantum mechanics if you don't understand like some linear algebra and everything if you've never seen differentiation integration good luck doing multivariable calculus it, it's just going to be impossible so with regards to this right essentially there's a reason that certain things let's say we have a 10-week term that certain things are taught in weeks 8 9 and 10 and not weeks 1 2 and 3 any logical person can tell you it's because you're building up to understand these later weeks and everything, right? So essentially, understanding, I would go as far to say, if you want to get a really, really good grade, if you really took those first seven weeks, so 70% of all the content that you're learning for a module, and you said, I'm going to go and learn this to an absolute T, that'll get you through any exam that you need to worry about. If you then said the other 30%, let's say it's genuinely just a module you don't care about too much with, God, I've had plenty of those. Or it's just something that is actually just super, super difficult and you just really are struggling to get the gist of it. And it's just not feasible to, for you to actually go and learn it in the given time frame that you have. Because one, like I said, we have to be realistic with how much we're trying to learn and everything. So learn the first 70% really, really well. Then this other 30%, obviously it would come easier getting into the last 30% if you understand all the prerequisite stuff to a really good level. And then essentially, just try and learn it to a level of, yes, I get the idea of what's going on. I can do roughly most of the questions that are kind of going on there, but I don't understand it to the level of what is probably the same level that I understand all these other stuff to. And that is completely fine. You will be absolutely fine. You will ace any exam uh, unless it is all just really focused on this last little bit. But the majority of the time, most modules are just taught. So it's like, if you understand this, you will be absolutely fine. This is just to really try and milk that 80, 90, even try and push for like 100% in an exam. If you're doing like a subject, like an essay based thing, obviously you're graded out of 80. This stuff here might not even be relevant. Maybe it is. I don't know. I don't do that subject. And thank goodness I don't, because the fact that I can walk into an exam and know that I'm graded out of 100 and not 80, like knowing that I'm have an extra 20% that is just so phenomenal to me and I just don't understand why they do it in like essay based subjects kind of crazy but you know not the game that I'm playing and I'm far happier on this one that I am in so yeah that is tip number three tip number four that is essentially how do you go and learn all this content in the most efficient way possible for me it was doing questions so obviously when you get to things like maths and physics especially something like a pure maths at, at a university level more so than like at A levels and everything, you get these really, really abstract ideas. And 
in your head, you might think, right, okay, I think it works like this and everything. When you actually start doing questions, you start noticing all those tiny imperfections that you actually did not understand, that when it does come to doing these questions, you kind of clarify a lot of those things. I think it would be the same for, you know, just even physics, engineering. If you guys are doing a bunch of questions and everything, you also start reinforcing the ideas that, one, that you already do know and you clarify, yes, this is the right way to think. Two, the things that I don't know, this is actually how I'm meant to be thinking about this kind of topic, whether it be something like an entropy or how a vector space works or something. So it could be any arbitrary kind of thing that you're learning. And I think doing questions is the best way to one, clarify what you're doing, and then just also solidify the fact of, yes, this is the right way to think. For people that are doing essays, I actually decided I don't want to leave everyone out or half those people out that are doing that. So I went and spoke to some of my friends that are doing like, uh, masters in history and uh, econ and everything that are you know really locked into having, actually having to write about essays the advice that they gave is just spending time reading a bunch of um, you know journal articles this that the other and everything in the same way that you guys are practicing questions you're trying to reinforce this idea of so what are the top people in a field really kind of doing when they write an essay, like what's the good structure? What is the, the best language to be using? And the only way you're gonna do that is just once again, by reinforcing these ideas and seeing what the top people are doing and everything. And also kind of clarifying, okay, I would usually write an essay like this. It would be, here's my introduction. Here are the counterpoints to what I would believe in everything. And then here's a conclusion or something. What they would do is they would go and look at all what the top people are doing that would you know be in the same kind of topic that they're arguing and then see okay so they're starting off the same way as me but there's slight imperfections in the way that i would kind of structure an essay with these counterpoints and everything and it's just about clarifying those small things which i genuinely only think you're going to see if you're doing questions and doing a little bit of further extra reading and everything so in terms of how I went on to go and get a first and I thought it was pretty comfortable. Yes, it did take a lot of time. Yes, it is demanding. But, you know, even a mooch like me was kind of able to go and get a really good grade and, you know, land up here. So I'm super, super happy. But it's only because I put the work in and I applied these four things. And once you do that, I genuinely believe any person, you don't need to be a genius. You don't even need to be above average. You can genuinely be a below average student and you can go on, like, look at, look at me. You guys have heard the way I speak. I do not speak with any eloquency. That is the big word that I use and it kind of throws the little spanner in the works. But besides that, I genuinely think you can go and get an absolutely wicked grade if you just apply those four things, whether it be your A-levels, GCSEs or university, you will get a good degree. Just manage your time. Don't move on till you understand something do your questions and everything, and just stop goddamn procrastinating, which is exactly what I'm doing. So I'm going to get back to doing a groups and representations problem set. So yeah, hoorah.